on guys it is gamestone here bringing you just a kind of like a, a thoughts on this trade now um i'm just gonna make gamestone sports and gaming um right now i'm in college so um the thing i can do now is to make sports videos and obviously when i come back for break i'll try making as many gaming videos as i can save them and upload them as time goes but for now we're gonna be sticking with sports video and I have to make one, especially on the biggest, the biggest news this whole off season. Um, ever since KD came to the Warriors, this has been the biggest move yet. Kyrie Irving has been traded to the Boston Celtics for Isaiah Thomas, Jay Crowder, and Ante Zizic, and the Brooklyn Nets first round unprotected pick. Uh, my first thoughts are it's unbelievable. Um. I did not find out until I was just scrolling through Facebook and then NBA memes posted something like that. And I thought it was just a joke because, you know, I didn't have my phone at the time. But I actually checked and it actually happened. It's just kind of hard to believe because Kyrie, I watched him pretty much his whole career. Like, I'm, I don't, I'm not like a Cavalier fan. I'm a Laker fan. But I always liked Kyrie Irving's game and I always liked how his killer instincts kind of like the closest thing to Kobe's. I always respected Kyrie. Um, and I could say he's one of my if one of my favorite players, if not my favorite player. So just, you know, going to his rival team, the Boston Celtics, and Isaiah Thomas coming to Cleveland, in which that was the team that prevented him from reaching the finals. So it's just kinda hard to believe how that worked out. And it's still, you know, it's still um it's still processing. So my initial thoughts are when I first saw the trade was Cleveland won the trade. Um Obviously, Boston, they um they got Kyrie. And Kyrie, honestly, a lot of people say that he can't lead a team. Or look what he did before LeBron came in 2014. I think you guys are forgetting the fact that he was 21 years old, 22. And they're, they're becoming better and better each year. And Kyrie Irving was really, truly becoming like a star in the league. Now, if LeBron never came in 2014, I guarantee you Cleveland would be in the playoff picture. Even without LeBron. And... You know, Kyrie's would be averaging, I don't know, over 27, 27 points a game. So you can't really um, tell, you can't really say that Kyrie doesn't know how to lead a team because he was so young. And I know he can't lead a team like LeBron did. LeBron, you know, he reached the finals when, in 2007, like three, four years after he was drafted. I get it. But everybody's different. I'm not saying Kyrie's LeBron. I'm not saying any of that. LeBron's obviously better. But Kyrie is, he's going to make a team better, okay? A lot of Cavalier fans said, oh, the reason why we lost the finals is because Kyrie was not there in 2015. See, Kyrie Irving is a game changer. Going to the Celtics for Kyrie, he, he's the man on that team. Even though they got Gordon Hayward, he's better than Gordon Hayward. He is the best player on the team with good players around him, a good city. Their fans in Boston are dedicated to their teams. I think Kyrie Irving will have a good time there. Um, I don't know exactly... If the Celtics going to beat the Cavs, I don't think they will. Like, the the Celtics, um, I think they got slightly, I, I think they're still the same. Um, in terms of last year, they probably got a little worse just because they got rid of Avery Bradley. But other than that, I mean, Kyrie's a beast. And you got more picks to trade. I guarantee you Celtics are going to make some moves. And you better watch out for Kyrie because he's only 25 years old. And just like what Danny Ainge still said, he said, we feel like his best basketball still had him. That's right, because this whole time Kyrie's been averaging like 25 points, 24 points a game, and he's with LeBron. What if he's without LeBron? You know, Isaiah Thomas averaged 20, 28, 29 points as the main player on his team when none of, most of his other dudes on his team couldn't score. Kyrie, on the other hand, was on a team full of three-point shooters like Channing Fry, Kevin Love, Kyle Korver, and then, you know, you got players, like, obviously, if you have a LeBron on your team, you, you, you mean, LeBron's the best player since Kobe, and he's the most dominant in the league right now, so you can't, you can't be the main man, so, like, I don't blame Kyrie for this move, um, but, um, as for the move itself and the trade, um, the Cavaliers, they did a really good job. I mean, this whole offseason seemed, like, terrible for them. You know, the best thing that happened to them was getting Derrick Rose this offseason. The season was kind of looking, or in terms of offseason, it was looking kind of bad. Um, but now they got, you know, Isaiah Thomas, who averaged 28, 29 points a game. 
um, a Jay Crowder, a pretty good defender, um, and uh, Ante Zizic, but that's whatever. We'll see how he does. And more importantly, the first round pick. Now that this is what's tell what's telling me, like what happened with this trade, is that they got that first round pick because just in case LeBron and it leave next year, they got that first round pick to rebuild around. Because we all know Brooklyn is not good. Okay, they might have got D'Angelo or whoever they got. They're still not good. That means they're going to be a lottery team. That means Cleveland's going to get a top pick. And they're going to do something with that pick. Um, But it's kind of 50-50 in the sense. Because the Celtics actually got, you know, a player in Kyrie, a closer. I mean, Isaiah Thomas was a closer too. But Kyrie, he's a beast. And I can't emphasize that enough. Um, But at least the Cavaliers, they got something out of it. You know, unlike the Pacers and the Thunder, you know. They, they, you trade a star like Paul George for players like Sabonis and all the deep. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying, like, that's who you get for Paul George. But at least you get Isaiah Thomas, a number five MVP candidate from Kyrie Irving. At least you get Jay Crowder, a decent or good defender, something that Cleveland was lacking the entire season last year. You get a first round pick, which you really needed because you need to secure your future. Or you could use it to get another another good player. You never know what the Cavaliers are going to do. And I'm saying it's a good trade for both teams, but slightly more on the Cleveland edge because LeBron. Let's be honest, if, if if they didn't get anything for Kyrie, I mean, LeBron's going to leave. And everyone's going to say LeBron's going to leave now, but I truly think LeBron won't leave. It doesn't seem realistic to me. I mean, let's think about it. He came back to Cleveland in 2014, and even if he does leave, he doesn't owe anything to Cleveland. He doesn't owe anything. You know, you got Isaiah Thomas, and now you got LeBron. I mean... Now you, you're not forced to trade anybody. You just have to convince LeBron to stay. Now that you got Isaiah Thomas, maybe you could do that. But here's where it gets weird, okay? Cleveland's roster got a little deeper in the sense of getting Jay Crowder, getting Ante Zizic, and a first-round pick for next year. Um, they got a future in terms of, you know, young guys. But what really has me wondering is, They traded Kyrie Irving, a person you could technically... I'm not going to say he saved LeBron's career, um, because LeBron did make that block. And he he had a big impact just as much as Kyrie did. So they both equally, you know, they put in 40 in Game 5 of the 2016 Finals to come back from 3-1. They went 3-2, obviously won Game 6, and Kyrie hit that Game 3. And I can understand Kyrie's frustration. I mean, that was probably the most clutch shot in NBA Finals history in a Game 7 against a 73-9 win Warrior team. I mean, that play is not that talked about much about like the block of LeBron James is more talked about I get it it's an amazing block one of the greatest blocks of all time but Kyrie is the reason why they technically won that game I'm not trying to take anything from LeBron but if Kyrie didn't make that three we don't know what would happen who knows like Clay could have hit something dream on um Curry and you never know so I'm just saying you know Kyrie was not being fully recognized as the superstar he is going to become and, I, you know, when Kobe and Shaq were together, um, you know, obviously if they stayed together, they could have won more rings or made more finals together. But Shaq leaving opened up a new um, story for Kobe, o- opened up a new um, opportunity. And that's where Kobe started averaging 35, 32, 30. That's where he became the Black Mamba, in my opinion. You know, he became... A superstar, I mean, he already was, but I'm saying that he became Kobe. Like, that's when everybody started recognizing, oh, this guy's for real. So I'm just saying, Kyrie, I feel like that's something he needed. But in terms of the trade, like, how you got an Isaiah Thomas, a worse defender than Kyrie. I mean, Kyrie's not terrible, but he's not great. Isaiah Thomas is not a good defender, okay? I'm not trying to hate on him. His size just doesn't support it. How are you going to guard Curry? You know, Curry's, to me, the greatest shooter of all time. The greatest shooter of all time. And now you got Isaiah Thomas guarding Curry? I don't know about that. You know, I sure, you got Jay Crowder, pretty good defender. But, you know, Curry against Isaiah Thomas.
Now, yeah, now we can talk. Now, there, here's another side of this. I did say IT was a top five MVP candidate, 28 points, blah, blah, blah. But he's on a team. He was on a team last year, in which the other guys couldn't do much scoring. He had to carry the load, and he was the main offensive um, tool. So, looking at that, I mean, he's not going to be the same in Cleveland. It just won't work like that. He's not going to be a top five MVP candidate in Cleveland. He's not going to average 28 in Cleveland. You know, I'm, I'm just saying, like, it's. I I just I kind of question. I, I like the trade that Cleveland made, but at the same time, I kind of question it because, you know, you, you sure you got a guy that averaged 28, you got a guy that's a superstar, you got a guy that's, you know, you know, close to Kyrie Irving level. So it should be a good trade, right? I don't know about that. I mean, you now he has to got Curry. So, I mean, I don't know. Curry's going to put up, what, 35 a game now? It's just going to be weird to see. Um but in terms of I, who I think won this trade, I think Cleveland won this trade. Because even if Kyrie stayed on the Cleveland Cavaliers, or even if he got traded to a different team, like maybe the Suns, they got Josh Jackson, Eric Bledsoe, guess what? Warriors are still winning it. The Warriors will still win it this year. You know, I don't see any team beating them unless they get injured. I'm not hoping for injuries, okay? I'm not that type of person. But the only way that you could beat the Warriors if they get injured, if Kevin Durant gets injured, Curry gets injured, something like that, you know? So, this whole thing, Cleveland, I guess, technically became a deeper team, um, but it's not going to help. I don't think it'll help. You know, LeBron, the Cavs, IT, they're going to play their hearts out, and they're going to try getting revenge on the Warriors for last year's loss, especially LeBron. Dude, he's going to go off next year in the finals. A lot of people are saying, you know, the Celtics are going to make the finals this year. No, they're not. You kidding me? As long as you got LeBron on your team and you got Isaiah Thomas, and don't forget about Kevin Love. The dude put up 20 and 11 last year. You know, just taking that into consideration, and mainly LeBron. I mean, put LeBron on any team, and I guarantee you they're a title contending team. So I, I get it. Celtics are a good team. They got players like Gordon Hayward, Kyrie, who's going to go off. You know, Al Horford, but you have to take into consideration that Al Horford, he's, what, 41st in rebounding? He's, like, what, six six rebounds as a power forward? I'm sorry, you know? And Gordon Hayward's not Larry Bird, okay? he People are talking about Gordon Hayward like he's Larry Bird. Now, he's a great player, don't get me wrong, but that's not that's not going to take the Celtics to the finals. This team they got now is no way they're going to beat the Cleveland Cavaliers. The only way the Celtics are going to make the finals is if LeBron comes somewhere else. That's not the East. You know, if he comes to the Spurs, the Rockets, even the Lakers, you know, then I could see the Celtics maybe making the finals. But, I mean, then now the Wizards are closer, in my opinion. Um... The Wizards can compete with the Celtics better, in my opinion. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with this um, incoming season. But in summary, I think Cleveland slightly became a better team. I think they won the trade, but um, they're not going to beat the Warriors still. And the Celtics, I feel like they got slightly better in terms of the trade. I'm not talking about the off season. This trade, I feel like they got slightly better because Kyrie is very capable of leading the team and. He was getting better as a team with who on his team? A Tristan Thompson, who wasn't even good back then. Who else? I can't even name anybody else because none of us remember. Anthony Parker? Really? Put him with good players, but and he's the main man. The Celtics will be good for a few in the upcoming years. There, There's no way they're making the finals, though, if LeBron's on the Cavs. So, um... Yeah, please like, comment, and subscribe, guys. And let me know what you guys think about this trade. I mean, obviously, you guys have to be surprised about it because this is probably the first time that you trade a superstar for another superstar. They're both in their primes to rival teams. That just does not happen. But anyways, like, comment, subscribe, guys. And uh, let me know what you guys think about this trade. Was it a good, was it a better trade for the Cavs? Better trade for the Celtics? Equal trade for both teams. Um, And yeah, I mean... That's all for now. I'm going to be uploading some more NBA slash NFL videos in the future, so stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, guys.